Hello friends and welcome to today's simple project of making butterscotch sauce. The ingredient list is in the description. This has to be one of my favorite sweet sauces. You will be everyone's favorite at a party if you bring this. This is not to be confused with caramel sauce, as caramel sauce is usually made with white granulated sugar. Butterscotch, at its most basic level, is a mixture of brown sugar and butter. However, in this recipe, I will add a couple of other things to bring it far beyond its one-dimensional state. We will be doing something a little different today. I will be sharing with you some tips and a reverse method to help you prevent it from splitting. Let's start by getting a medium pot. We will be using dark brown sugar to give it that rich body it deserves. Pour in 300 grams of dark brown sugar. Next, we will be using extra thick double cream to make it even richer. Ideal for cooking and spooning. We will need 300 grams of that. Next, a good little addition to the sauce would be using light corn syrup. This will do two things. Firstly, help in preventing crystallization of the sugar, and secondly, give it that nice mouthfeel. And the plus point is that this has real vanilla in it as well. So pour in 90 grams of light corn syrup. Next, to bring out the flavor of the sauce, a little salt will help. Sea salt will give it that complimentary salt kick without being overpowering. Pour in 2 grams of sea salt or a good pinch. Take the pot over to the stove and turn on the heat to medium to high. Stir with a spoon to mix everything in slowly. Take your time in making this and you will never go back to store-bought butterscotch sauce. You will not regret making this. The only regret you will have is putting the spoon down. Use this to top your ice cream, slice of pie, or fill your muffins, and the list can go on. Typically, butterscotch sauce is made of brown sugar mixed with butter and cream, then cooked to 116 degrees Celsius. Today, I will change the temperature and process of adding in the butter later. This will give it a clean and velvety texture with a great sheen. We want it to boil, but gradually, as we don't want anything to burn. We are looking for a temperature of 105 degrees Celsius. For this, you will need a thermometer. Once it has reached the desired temperature, take it off from the heat. Stir it to settle the bubbles. Next, we are going to add in some Madagascan vanilla bean paste. This is going to give it that base flavor. We only need 10 grams of vanilla bean paste. The reason I'm adding the vanilla in now is to gently infuse the vanilla into the mixture. The residual heat will still help to disperse the flavor all around rather than cooking it out for too long. For the last thing we mustn't forget is the butter. Previously I had mentioned that typically the butter and sugar are cooked together, but there is a risk of it from splitting and I don't want to separate the fat from the butter. By doing it this way, I am able to incorporate the butter at a more gentle approach. Remember to use unsalted butter. We need 250 grams of cold butter cut into small cubes just like this. Let's measure the temperature of the mixture. It has dropped from 105 to about 75 degrees Celsius. This is a great temperature to slowly drop in some butter. Do this in stages. Mix everything with a whisk until it is gone. Then repeat and drop in some more. After everything is gone, let me show you what the temperature has come to. It is about 45 degrees Celsius. It has dropped by about 30 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, it is perfect to enjoy right now. Let me show you how good this is. Take a spoon and let it coat the back of the spoon. Don't you just want this to coat your mouth right now, just to see what I'm talking about? Draw a line. When the line stays, it is a great consistency when warm, still able to hold its form. Plus, look at that shine. If you're not going to enjoy it now, pour it into a jar and keep it at room temperature. Let it set to a thicker consistency. The next day, Let's have a look at what we got here. Let me show you its great spread consistency when at room temperature. 
This is great for plating up desserts. I don't have a dessert at the moment, so here is a biscuit to show you what I mean. Well, there you have it, butterscotch sauce. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that like button, leave a comment, and if you haven't subscribed, do that too, so that you can join me on more food adventures. Until next time, bye for now.